President Hall, Dean Toglia, trustees, faculty, alumni, and Mercy College staff, parents and friends, and of course, the proud 2020 class of the School of Natural and Health Sciences. Congratulations. You are graduating at a particularly auspicious time, one we could hardly have imagined even a couple months ago. 50 years from now, you'll regale your children and grandchildren with tales of the great pandemic of 2020. You'll remember not only how it remarkably altered your final months of college, but how it created previously unheard of competition for that precious commodity endearingly known as toilet paper. All joking aside, this world-changing pandemic confirms the wisdom of your degree in natural and health sciences. Never before has there been a greater need for or appreciation of the efforts of scientists and healthcare practitioners. Let's take a moment to celebrate not only the work underway in labs, clinics, and hospitals to stem the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, but your own wisdom in choosing fields that offer so much promise and opportunity. The realization of that promise will ensure that lives taken during this pandemic were not lost in vain. In coming to this commencement ceremony, you demonstrate your own success, not only in meeting the tough standards of this outstanding college, but in proudly representing the success your families and teachers achieved in cultivating and nurturing your talents. I'm here to help you celebrate those accomplishments and bring them into your future. To do that, I offer one simple piece of advice, learn how to fail. And each time you fail, make sure you are feeling failing better. You may rightfully ask, Raj, how do you fail well? What loosey-goosey self-help nonsense is that? I'm here to tell you that failure, particularly in our fields, is essential to success. Accepting and even seeking non-catastrophic failure is key to a fruitful and rewarding life and career particularly in biomedical research. I'm not talking about totaling your parents' car or accidentally incinerating your neighbor's garage, but about embracing the kind of failure that enables and advances transformative success. My thinking is heavily influenced by Stuart Firestein's thoughtful book entitled Failure, Why Science is So Successful. He argues that we must create and defend a space for non-catastrophic failure. That is a place where failure can happen regularly. Firestein describes meaningful or magical failure, uh, what he calls interesting stuff, ideas, questions, paradoxes, or contradictions. Consider the development of treatments for stroke or Alzheimer's disease. Those conditions are the leading causes of disability blamed for motor paralysis and dementia that affects so many aging Americans. Current estimates predict that the cost of treating them in the United States will reach $1.4 trillion a year by 2050. Of course, the immense personal suffering they create is unquantifiable. The search for cures has led to more than 100 failed clinical trials mostly focused on the same constellation of ideas. These failures have critically expanded knowledge. They've helped reveal that current dominant theories about the causes of neurological diseases may in fact be incorrect. The wrong direction stimulated fresh new thinking about new approaches that may help, to help develop new treatments. Indeed, some of those new theories are emerging from work being done right here at Mercy College. The failures have underlined a paradoxical, but in retrospect, sensible conclusion that fixing the brain is not like fixing the liver or the kidney. Our treatments, therefore, must reflect these differences. So failures that lead us to productive paradoxes or contradictions can be very positive and can undoubtedly set the table for future successes. Life is flush with instances of acceptable or desirable failure. Stepping up to the plate and participating in life 
carries the likelihood of failure, but more importantly, the chance to improve. How you respond to the inevitable failures that occur in ordinary life can determine how successful you really become. But how much failure is acceptable? Let me finish with anecdotes that illustrate just how common failure is. Lions are the confident kings of the jungle, the ultimate predators. But did you know they successfully stalk their prey only 7% of the time? While we commonly assume that lions, like those of us quarantined at home, can eat whenever they choose, 93% of the time they fail in their pursuit of a meal or snack. Moreover, since lions hunt around the edge of the herd to pick off older, weaker animals, their success rate in hunting the fittest prey is even lower. So the mightiest in the animal kingdom fails most of the time. Sports offer even more accessible examples in Firestein's book. We all understand the societal and financial rewards that come from athletic success, but consider the leading measure of success in baseball, the batting average. For those unfamiliar with baseball, a batting average is the number of hits a player gets divided by the number of times they get up to the plate. The greatest batters of all time, from Yankee legend Derek Jeter to Mets great David Wright, achieved hits between 30 and 31% of the time. Nearly 70% of their trips to the plate ended in failure. From the king of the jungle to the most revered athletes, most so-called winners lose most of the time. I would like to end with a quote from Samuel Beckett, also included in Firestein's remarkable book. Ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. In closing, I want to wish you and your families the warmest and heartiest congratulations and wishes for the future and an admonition to embrace failure as an essential part of a life of purpose, meaning, and most of all, genuine success. Thank you. Congratulations, class of 2020. Congratulations, class of 2020. I'm wishing you the best of luck in moving out uh, into the uh, world as you finish college. And I'm confident uh, that you will realize that um, building community and working together not only nationally, but globally, will be an important way in which we solve uh, critical problems.